So first up, I'm making the poolish, and in my bowl, I've got 150 grams of room temperature water, three grams of dried yeast, and 150 grams of white flour. And that's got a protein content of 13%. I'm gonna mix this together with a bowl scraper. You could use a spoon, but the key is not to worry about getting the dough smooth at this point. The time in the fridge is gonna take care of that. The measurements for this recipe are exact, so I'd advise weighing in grams. But for anyone who isn't familiar with this measurement, I'll leave the volumes for the ingredients in the description box below. Now this just needs to be covered and popped in the fridge for anywhere between 12 to 18 hours. The series of extended proofs we're gonna give it in the fridge are gonna give great color, great texture, and great flavor. So here we are the next day, and as we can see, the poolish has fermented really well. It's nice and bubbly and very active. So now we can mix the final dough before again letting that rest in the fridge. So I'm adding 220 grams of room temperature water to the bowl, and that's gonna help the poolish release. Sprinkle on 13 and a half grams of sea salt and four grams of dried yeast. I'm gonna add this to a bigger container as we need to make sure this can expand overnight in the fridge without creeping out of our bowl. Give this a quick mix together to disperse the salt and the yeast, and then add in 380 grams of white flour. Again, this has 13% protein content. Give the ingredients a good working together, either in the bowl or on the work surface if it's easier. The aim of the game is to incorporate the wet and the dry ingredients together. Cover the container and leave out at room temp for 30 minutes and my kitchen is 20 degrees Celsius today, that's 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Come back and give it a quick two minute workout just to make sure there are no lumps. We're not looking for a silky smooth dough here. The next slow proof in the fridge is gonna produce a really smooth and elastic dough. So now just cover it, pop it in the fridge for another 12 to 18 hours. Right, here we are the next day, and as you can see, the dough has proved really well in the fridge overnight. Now this has come straight out from the fridge, it's still cold, and I'm gonna tip it straight out onto the work surface. Then gently bring each side of the dough up and over itself and form it into a ball. I actually proved a double quantity of this in the end so I could make some pizza tonight. So I'll divide it into two so that I'm working with the same amount the quantity in my recipe. And if anyone would like to see the pizza recipe, let me know in the comments. Now you should have about 900-ish grams of dough, and this recipe makes four baguettes that are about 35 to 40 centimeters long. Weigh your dough out into four pieces, which should be about 220 grams each. Now first we'll ball each piece up and we'll leave it to rest for a good 20 minutes covered at room temperature, and this will allow the dough to relax and begin to come back to room temperature. I've used a small drizzle of olive oil in each one of these baking trays just to stop the dough balls sticking. Working with two of the dough balls at a time will give you a little more room in your kitchen, but of course if you've got the space then you could shape all four at once, but just make sure they'll all fit in your oven. Lightly dust the work surface and shape the dough ball into a short sausage by gently rolling over the dough and pinching down the seam. I'm not squeezing out the gases, I'm trying to keep them encased in the dough as I roll and press. Repeat with both pieces and cover with a cloth and then leave for 10 minutes to rest out at room temperature. The rest is really important as it will allow the dough to relax and make the next shaping process really easy. And finally, we'll repeat the same shaping process again, making sure we seal the dough from tip to tip. The dough will naturally extend while you do this, and again, be careful not to push out those gases. Now let's gently roll out the baguette to get an even size and to taper off the ends. Working from the center of the baguette, gently roll your hands forwards and backwards and slowly extend them outwards. Once you reach the very end, you can apply a bit more pressure and roll out the tips. Now baguettes are traditionally proofed on a couche, a cloth used for baking, but you can substitute this for a tea towel that's been well dusted with flour, but here I'll show you how to proof them on baking paper. 
I'm gonna bake these on my baking steel and I've added a baking tray to the bottom of the oven and inside is a non-coated stainless steel chain. This is preheated in the oven along with the baking steel for one hour at 250 degrees Celsius, that's 485 degrees Fahrenheit. I'll use the chain and baking tray combination to create steam, but you could use a preheated baking tray in the bottom of the oven. If you don't have a baking steel or a stone, then you could proof these on a baking tray and then slide that straight into the oven to bake, but I find I get a little bit better oven spring when baking on a steel or a stone. Now, cover with a cloth and leave those baguettes to proof for about 45 minutes. This will depend on the temperature of your kitchen. And while these are proofing, you can begin the shaping process on the last two pieces of dough. Test the dough by gently pushing it with your finger. The baguettes are ready to bake when the dough slowly pushes back out. It should feel gassy, but still strong. Now as these haven't been proved on a floured couche, I'll give the exterior a quick flour and gently brush it. That'll give a really nice color contrast when baked. Right, now it's time to score. Imagine two parallel lines running down the center of the baguette, about one centimeter apart. Hold your blade at an angle and not straight. This is gonna help with the ear of the bread opening up. Now don't score at an angle across the baguette, score almost in a straight line, working from the right side of the imaginary parallel lines to the left. Start the next cut just above the previous one and so on. Now using a peel or something flat, slide the baguettes into the preheated oven, give the top a quick mist and gently throw two ice cubes into the steaming tray. Bake for 20 minutes or until you've got a deep dark color on the outside. This produces the best crust in my opinion. Now your other two baguettes should be shaped, proofed and ready to bake. So a super simple little baguette recipe, really easy, takes a bit of time, but really, really worthy effort. Now, if you make this and you post a pic up on Instagram, then don't forget to drop me a tag. That's it, I'd like to say a huge thank you for watching. I'll see you again very soon, stay tuned.